Hey guys, what's going on? It's Brad Fusion here, and today I am playing some more Space Engineers, and today I'm going to be doing something that yet again goes back to my roots of gravity, and my gravity cannons, which I originally started off doing. Now, there is an old video of mine, which you guys might remember, which I called the bolt action cannon, which in fact wasn't really bolt action, it was just more of a, um, a pulley system. It, it, I, I still don't even know what to call it, but it's something like that. Now, in this video, I was thinking back to when I was younger and I used to watch anime all the time and one of the shows I used to watch was the Gundam series. Now if you don't know what Gundams are or the Gundam series is, it's basically about mechas or robots fighting for justice basically. Kind of like Transformers but uh, not. It's, it's actually a, pretty, a lot cooler than uh, Transformers. At least that's my opinion anyway. Um, but in that show they a lot of the times they were focused in the out of space, and to launch the mechs from the ships they would have this sort of rail type launcher, whereas the mechs would get loaded up, they'd lock in place, and then they'd get flung out at high speeds using magnetic rails. I think that was uh, magnetic rails. But because we don't have that in here, I'm using gravity, and here is my rail system. So the way this functions is pretty basic. On the two sides here you have gravity generators, now these are set to a certain uh, radius because the I, I can actually use sorry uh, blah, 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 blah. I actually I, I did this video once before uh, but I tweaked it a little bit to try and actually make it a lot better these here because of one of the latest updates you can actually change the size of the gravitational field so right here this only affects like a small area so right now in here this isn't affected at all if I turn my heart and you guys can see no gravity now, what we have down the bottom here is a stone that's locked into place. So when these arms come in, the field should touch the stone and start moving this forward at a very slow speed. Once it hits this field up here, as you guys can see, the gravitational field or pull is a lot stronger, and that'll pull me along to about this point here, which is where the inverted gravity starts kicking in, or it starts slowing it down. Now, I've had a lot of trouble with getting this thing to slow down, and by that I mean it just doesn't slow down a lot of the time. And I originally had it ending at about here, and you can see all the gravitational generators I have, but for whatever reason, it gets to the point where it slows down, but then it just keeps going. It doesn't stop, regardless of the fact that whether or not it's still in the field. So here I kept going on, I kept going on, and I thought, well, screw it, I'm going to throw some downwards generators on it. And it should stop it about here. Now I'm not too sure what, why these help, I think it's simply because it's forcing it downwards to grind along here so it slows down, but those I haven't actually affected or haven't actually changed the field or radius of, but however these ha I have. So if I press Alt, Shift and F12, you guys can see all the gravitational fields that this place has. Now through in the end you don't see their fields unless I go all the way out here because for whatever reason, that's the default field value, which is uh, 125 by 125 by 125. But, so let's not just worry about them, let's worry about the ones here. And actually, let's actually start at the start, so you guys get an understanding of what's actually going on. So, seeing all this white stuff. So, over here, this is the two uh, gravita gravitational fields I was talking about that actually go inwards here. So, as you guys can see, there's no gravity in here at all. But when these actually close inwards, you can see that they'll be uh, intersecting in the middle. That will allow your thing to start drifting forwards until it touches this. And as you guys can see, this gradually gets stronger until it's touching all three. And then this keeps going on until you come to about here, uh, just after these poles here. That's when the other gravity starts kicking in and the field gets extremely strong here until you reach even more and even more. And then obviously you'll get the uh, downwards gravity as well. So let's take this out for a test drive. And let's hope it works, because I haven't actually done a test since I've shortened it at the end. Actually, it actually was a lot longer than what it is now, but I've shortened it down just to um, get it uh, to, to make it look a little bit smaller, a little bit better. So what I'm going to do now is actually, I'm actually going to turn that uh, view off. I might do a second run through if, if I don't destroy, if this doesn't ruin the first run. I'll actually do a second one with that view on for you guys. So here I am loading up my ship. Now you can imagine... Uh, the uses for this, you can have a ship up in a hangar, upstairs, you could fly it downstairs here. Now obviously, uh, this doesn't pick up as much speed as I would have liked, uh, simply because the length uh, I'm actually limiting myself to, but obviously you guys can make this a lot longer, or you guys can have a lot more gravity 
generators along here. The only problem with a lot more gravity generators is that you're going to need a lot more to slow yourself down. So right now I've kind of limited myself to this small area here. Because I didn't want to have this massively long cannon just so I can reach up to 100 and try and slow this thing down in time. So now we've got our ship locked into place. Let me turn its dampeners off here. So it doesn't um, slow itself down. Are uh, these off? Dampeners are now off. So what we're going to do is you're going to have command up here in their console, in wherever they are in the ship. And they're going to activate the two motors for you guys. So they're going to go here and they're going to change the velocity to a negative value or positive value depending on which one uh, is the opposite. So we're going to go at 66. So it's even and you guys can see that the arms are now starting to move in. Now this is a slight bug but I'm actually glad it's a bug. When these actually come in the actual system doesn't start moving until the pilot actually uh, engages its thrusters just a little bit just to give that little nudge. So even though it's a bug I'm using that to my advantage to kind of say well the system's ready pilot if you're ready to go let us know. So right now as you guys can see that it's actually in there and if I do this you guys can see that the actual gravitational field is right where it needs to be and it's actually intersecting uh, right above the asteroid. So there is actually gravity there, it's just not pulling it just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lightly tap, actually, I didn't realize I was actually off there a little bit. Let me lock myself in. There we go, we're locked in. Okay, so let me just lightly tap W and you can see down the bottom my speed is actually picking up slightly. I should get up to about, maybe about 2 meters a second if I'm lucky. Should we get about to that before it actually... Okay, there we go, 1.8. And then sooner or later, I will reach the second field. Here we go. And this should get us up to about 20 meters per second. Now, obviously, it's not that quick, but I still think it's a pretty cool concept. So here I am. I'm releasing at 23 meters per second. I'm actually going to slow myself down so you guys can see this thing actually slowing itself down. And it should please, please stop for me. Please be nice. Please be ever so nice. Dunk. Yay! <laughs> it actually worked. It didn't blow up or destroy anything. It actually stopped right on the mark. Even used the um, landing gears I had there. So there we go. There's a very nice run. Uh, too bad I didn't actually launch myself out. But I wanted to make sure this worked fine. So the way you'd get the thing back is pretty simple. You come over here. You'll turn off all the gravity generators. You'll uh, pull the thing back. And then you can just re redo whatever you need to do. So I'm going to do this run now a second time, but I'm actually going to have the display thing on. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to pull back all the arm. Um... Actually, no, I don't need to do that. I don't need to pull back all the rotors because that would just take a lot more time than I need to. I'm just going to turn all the gravity off, fly this thing back, and then I will just turn it back on again. And then I should have to manually activate it using the, uh, using the little ship here. So I'm actually going to lock the ship in just because I'm lazy. <laughs> so here we go. We're flying down here. I actually get a better view so I can actually see where I'm landing. Now obviously you can strip down and make the platform however you want. It can obviously fit different ships as well. I just left the cockpits on this uh, just simply because I was tweaking with it and everything like that. So here we go, we're locking in, dampen is off, and we will pull this thing back now. So the rail system is uh, pretty simply made. I just built a smaller ship inside of here and just uh, used the um, landing gear to kind of smoothen out so it actually doesn't damage anything. So here we are, we're flying back now. And we should start slowing ourselves down, not too much, but I should probably shouldn't have... I probably should have had my um, dampeners on to begin with. So here we are, we're coming back here. There is the gravity from the actual... Um, Oh, what's that from? That's from the gravity on the motors. I forgot they were even there. Like, I mean, I forgot they didn't turn off because of the other thing. So here, we're on a bit of a weird angle. So can I get back further? There we go. It's a bit finicky. There we are. We're back and we'll turn this thing on. Uh, there we go. That's on. Now all we have to do is get in here. Turn the, oops, turn the dampeners off. And get back into the ship and we should start accelerating and it should kick us in yes good okay so now we'll turn this view on so you guys can see how everything works so you guys can see that the gravitational fields there pull us out and we're going to come across these fields here and that's when we'll start picking up speed i'll turn my heart on actually so you guys can see the speed as well and there we go we get, we get kicked into the bigger field 
And I might actually... No, I'm not... I'm going to leave my ship, ship attached to see what actually happens. And as you guys can see, we've gotten, we've gotten to the field where it actually starts to slow us down quite dramatically. I think with my ship on top of it, we're not going to slow down on time. No, because my ship actually added the extra weight, so it wasn't able to slow down on time. Though it didn't deal too much damage, I don't think. I think it was only the two landing gear on the front that actually got ruined. Was that it? I think it was it, yeah. Okay, so now you guys saw how the gravity fields actually work and... Uh, nice display of all that. Now I know this isn't the best thing I've made, at least in terms of efficiency, as you can easily pick up enough speed using the ship itself. But I thought it would be something kind of cool, more of a roleplay sort of thing. Um, not more, uh, sorry, yeah, more of a roleplay sort of deal. If you wanted a sort of a rail launcher on your ship, this would probably be something you'd have. You could probably have this at like the front of your ship or something, if you actually had a really large ship. It would look really kind of cool too, you know, the enemies would see just your ships get launched out. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to uh, end this here, so thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.